All right, we finally got the Honda Prelude in the shop today. We're gonna be doing some work. Um, it's gonna finally be getting tuned and all that. I don't know if I'll tune it in this video or show you guys, but um, got a bunch of stuff to be doing to this thing. So start off, give you guys an overview of the car. It's a F20B out of an SIR Accord, which is pretty cool because those are not very common. Although it's basically just an H22 and uh, yeah, just simple bolt-ons. It's got like a muffler delete and uh, cold air intake, nothing crazy. It's got headers, pretty much simple build. All right, so basically what we're gonna be doing today is uh, idle air control valve block off plate because the thing is junk on it now. So it keeps surging and whatever. And now that I finally put on data in it for him, um, just gonna block off that thing and tune it out with Honda. So not a big deal. And uh, next thing is got a new gauge cluster. This is just an OEM prelude one. And that's because, so someone before him swapped the gauge cluster out with some digital dash one and it's pretty much awful. It's all like burnt out, you can barely read it. And it says the RPMs will be like 4,000 and the thing's actually at like 2,000 RPM, so it's way off and whatnot. So I'm gonna be swapping in the stock one again. Finally fix that problem, because you really don't know what RPMs you're at, which is very annoying. And then the part that's probably gonna take a lot longer is uh, got ourselves AEM wideband gauge and uh, O2 sensor, so we can tune it a little easier now. Now that we can read the fuel air ratio and then got a gauge cluster right here so this just a uh, basically it's like a universal auto meter one um, we're only gonna have one gauge in it for now until it gets more but basically so what i'm gonna have to do with that gauge cluster is i'm gonna get rid of this this is also a previous owner it's uh supposed to be like some fancy thing where it lights up this and you can read what's going on but it's junk and i have no clue what they use to put this on but it doesn't look great so this thing's getting thrown out basically it's junk and it looks dumb but uh for those gauges basically gonna have to drill this out and mount it to here and then run that aem gauge and all the wires up through here so i'm gonna have to pull this whole piece off remove it drill holes it's kind of be like little custom gauges um but i think it looked pretty cool so he could have just done the other ones with just the pillar gauge but i think it looks better right here so we also have to figure out how to wire it into the p28 Honda s300 ecu because it's an obd1 ecu in it now and this is an obd2 car so um pretty much the wiring is the same coming into the ecu so it shouldn't be too difficult and uh, also i think we're going to cut the cat out of this thing so uh a little better for tuning can add a little bit more timing so let's get into it all right i'm just gonna do the iec valve first and it's really just these two bolts right here and uh, i can pull it right off and swap it out and i think i will have to put this hose into that one because it is coolant hoses i believe so i just have to make like a connector or joint that makes them come together uh, not a big problem so i'm gonna do that and then show you guys once it's done all right so Got the block off plate on and those two hoses are connected to each other now. This is the old idle air control valve and we can pretty much throw this piece of junk out. Next thing, I think I'm gonna do the gauge cluster. Um, this shouldn't be too difficult, but it depends if they messed with the wiring to get that um, digital gauge cluster in. Hopefully not, and this is just plug in and play type of thing, but I have a feeling it might not be. All right, so the gauge cluster, it's pretty simple. Uh, just pull out these two screws. I think they're two Phillips heads, and then this whole trim piece pops out, and then I'll show you guys what to do next. All right, so once you got this little piece out, um, this is normally all one piece, as you can see, but uh, this is just hanging in there but normally there's screws at the bottom on each side and the whole gauge should come out together so this we will not need like random things everywhere and uh this carbon fiber piece of cardboard what the heck <laughs> that's 
pretty funny. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need that. And uh, it looks like this isn't held in by literally anything, so let's see. All right, so we got this thing out now. And uh, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. I was just hoping that, uh, yeah, that's probably not a good thing. All right, so bad news with this thing. Um, basically, these aren't the original connectors. Um, these are he, the guy clearly just duct taped and cut all the wires off of this one. And there should be, I think there might be two more connectors that it's actually just completely missing and has these in its place for that other digital dash. So without these connectors that plug into this spot right here, this spot right here, and then I think there's one on this side right there. So without the connectors, can't do much. So I am going to try and find a wire harness off a part out now, and I'll probably end up making a different video on this. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do this in this video, unfortunately, because... I can't really do much without the right connectors, so on to the next thing. All right, so I put the old di uh, digital gauge cluster back in with the cardboard taped carbon fiber. <laughs> and uh, going to have to find some connectors for the thing and wire it, rewire the whole entire thing, which stinks. But next, I'm going to start working on these gauges right here and remove this thing and all this glue and whatever this is. But uh, just to give you guys like an overview of this um, AM wideband gauge. So basically, you've got your wideband sensor, then you connect it into this harness right here, just like that. And then this end, obviously, this one connects into the AM, AEM wideband gauge and shows you your air fuel ratio. And then from there, plug this harness into the other connector on this and then you run these lines to uh, your Honda ECU and you're gonna need power and ground and then the uh, I believe it's the white and the blue if I remember correctly are the two air fuel ones basically so these are gonna be connecting to the original O2 wiring pinouts for Honda but uh, before we do that, and then also, I think I'm gonna do this first, so I know where to wire this to, because um, this is gonna be holding the gauge. So for now, it's just gonna have one gauge instead of all three. Not a big deal, it'll look pretty cool. But uh, I do have to drill out the dash and uh, kind of custom make, because this is kind of a universal kit. So this thing is gonna mount like right here or vice versa. I think it goes like that. Whatever, it doesn't matter, I'll figure it out. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to drill into this so that I can mount it in there. And then I also need to drill out holes for the wires to come up through. And then, so basically I'm just gonna pull this whole piece off, get rid of this crap, and then uh, start mocking this thing up and uh, go from there. All right, so got this piece out. So you just clips, pop them out, then undo these two connectors and uh, got this thing off in the little reflector piece that went up here. And just gotta peel all this tape or glue or whatever it is off. And then just like that. So came off pretty easy. I thought it was gonna get stuck on there. But uh, I'm gonna have to wipe it so it doesn't have this mark. Hopefully that's not stuck there. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put the gauge on here. I'm gonna assemble it, see how it looks, and then figure out, obviously I'm gonna have it centered, but if I want it closer or towards the rear, whatever looks better. And then I'm just gonna get rid of this thing pretty much <laughs> and pull it out from down here. All right, so I think it's gonna go something like that. And uh, as you can see, it's got a little bit more of a piece right here than on that side. So it like kind of offsets it. So 
at the uh, it kind of angles the gauges towards the driver a little bit so you can see them better. That's why it's got that little offset. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to center this up and uh, drill a hole in this thing. And uh, hopefully it lines up. All right, so I found that this is probably going to be like the best spot to put this because any more forwards, the gauges are basically going to go down. You won't be able to see them very well. And it has this little thing right here, this little lip. So I have it like this, it sticks up in the back. So I found that right here, it's pretty much flush, just like that. And then I will still be screwing into this. That way I don't screw into the actual whole dash where like the only way to get rid of that is to replace the whole dash. Or if I screw into this, you can always replace this piece if you find a part out or whatever. So I think that's where I'm gonna do it, right here. And uh, I think that's the best spot. So I'm gonna make some holes and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so we drilled the hole, got this thing mounted on. I did have to cut from where the hole was to cut this out so that I could put this nut on right here. Not a big deal though, and uh, it's mounted on now. All right, so we're back in the car now and uh, went ahead, screwed this thing on, and then I had to cut out a little piece here at the bottom to get end up getting those wires to fit not a big deal though got the gauge put in um it's all screwed in now and uh yeah so now i gotta go ahead and run these wires through the dash out to the bottom there and uh the thing i'm worried about is the one that connects to the ecu i don't know if it's gonna be long enough and eh, it probably should be but it's a little bit shorter than i thought it would be and then the main one that's going to be annoying is this one that I have to run outside of the car into the exhaust, basically, where the O2 sensor will be. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put this on now, run these wires, and then I'll set this on. Then I can put the top on and uh, see how it looks. And it's probably going to look a little empty for now because it's missing two gauges. But when it gets two new gauges, they'll go right in and it'll look pretty good. All right, so I just got it set there right now, but I got the wires wired in through down here and uh, i was wrong about this one it's definitely gonna be long enough got a bunch of extra so that's good and uh now pretty much just go ahead and clip this thing in all right so we got this thing pushed in now clipped in got this thing to go on so now i'm gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned up i'm gonna wire this outside of the car and uh i gotta wire this into the ecu all right so Got the wire, ran through the firewall, and uh, I just gotta run it down to the O2 plug and then put the O2 sensor in. So that's pretty much all set. But right now, I'm gonna start tapping in to the wires on the Hondata. So this has a harness because it goes from OBD2 harness to uh, OBD1 ECU. So they're not color coded, but um, for power, so you want to plug into uh, D14, which is this wire right here, and then D21 for your ground right here, um, and those should be the uh, white and the blue. So, I believe blue is the signal wire, so the 5 volt, and then the white wire is the ground, but I have to double check on that because I think they switched it because this used to be brown, the blue wire, um, and that was obviously ground. So that one might be ground now, but I'm going to double check on that and then let you guys know. All right, so looking at the directions that came with the gauge, um, it looks like the white wire is still 5 volt um, input. And the blue wire will be going to D21, which is a ground technically, but it says for a serial output. And then uh, obviously red is connected to 12 volt and black is obviously ground as well. So pretty simple. So these are just your power wires. And then white and blue will be your input wires or your signal wires. So this one is gonna go to D14 which is this one, I already got it pulled out. And if you're wondering, D14 is, so this connector and five wires in from this side. So one, two, three, four, 
and five and then d21 is this top one right here so this one is going to get the blue wire this one's going to get the white wire so i'm just going to use uh, wire taps tap into each of these and then for the i'll go over the uh red and black wires after all right so we got these two wires tapped in now we got the uh, red and black so for the red it's going to be this one so will be 12 volt power a25 and then this bottom one should be ground for the black wire that is a26 i believe so i'm going to go ahead and do those two and then probably going to just go ahead and turn the car on and see if that thing turns on all right so got all these tapped now you can see and uh i'm gonna try it out hopefully it works hopefully i did it right so turn the key on and there it is so uh it's gonna read 14.7 until the uh wideband sensor is hooked in to the exhaust and whatnot and then uh try it again and make sure it's reading correctly and then i'll hook up my laptop to the hondata and make sure it is reading through hondata because that's the main point but looks like it's working for now so i'm just gonna get this all put away and then um actually i'll probably end up leaving it out for now since that way i can plug into it because once it's tucked away it's a pain to get to with my cable so for now i'm actually going to go ahead and put in the o2 sensor right here so i got it right here um i'm just going to take out where the old o2 sensor is and then put this one in since the other one's useless now then plug it into that wire and uh should be good all right so as you can see got the wide band in and uh got it wired up through here into there which we already had and i pulled the rest of the wire through so it's tighter and uh got a bunch of the wire right there so i will have to tuck that away but um now i can let this thing off the jack and uh see if this gauge is reading all right got the key thing turns on Looks like it's reading. As you can see, it's definitely reading correctly. It's working, which is good. And uh, now I'm just gonna plug in my computer to make sure it's reading on on data, because I do have to switch a few settings on there for it to read on there. So. Okay, so a little update for you guys. Um, for whatever reason, this thing is like broken. So I think I'm gonna have to get a new laptop. But uh, yeah, I just figured I'd show you guys. So that's in now. And uh, one thing I did find out is this blue wire, you actually don't need to wire in it at all. So I ended up cutting it off and uh, taking it out. Um, that's actually only for AEM standalones, I believe. Um, but other versions of the AEM wide band gauge come with a brown wire, which are the ones I have installed before. And you do need to install that. But if it has the blue wire, you don't have to install that. So just a little heads up. I uh, disconnected that because you don't need it. You only need the white wire and then the red and the black. So it works. Um, I did was able to connect my computer for to it for like 30 seconds and did see that it was reading on Hondata. So... It does work. I just gotta figure out what's going on with this thing so I can actually tune it. But uh I guess I'm gonna do the cat delete now and then uh I guess I'm gonna wrap this video up. Probably won't really record the cat delete either because that's not really that fun. But uh yeah, maybe I'll record a few clips of driving this thing. Alright, just finished up the cat delete and uh about to go tune this thing. Antonio's about to be driving this. Cardi said he wanted to be on the YouTube. I'll introduce this bum. <laughs> this Cardi. This is the dude that sold the damn Teggy. I know. And I bought it. Dude, there's haters pissed off that you sold <laughs> the Teggy. made money on his head. <laughs> All right, so forgot to record us tuning last night, but um, I already did that. And this thing definitely goes pretty good now. Yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. The gauge works. 
pretty much everything works um, that I did. He found connectors to do that, so I might make a video on that. Not sure yet, but other than that, it's probably going to wrap it up for this one. And, uh, peace.